Let us join together now in our opening prayer. Lord Jesus, you can do anything but stop being good. We admit that we are not even good at realizing how much we need you every second of every day. If we are full of ourselves as we enter into worship, please empty us so that we can be full of you. Because God, you are good, and we long for your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. And now let us affirm our faith using that historic confession of the Christian church, the Apostles' Creed, saying, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence you shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And I'll invite you to turn in your hymn books now to page 39. As we prepare to celebrate one of God's great gifts, the gift of grace through Christian baptism. Uh, we believe that the work of uh, grace in baptism is available to people of all ages because it is not about us. We do not earn or qualify for God's love and grace. It's just simply freely given. We do, however, provide for all who receive grace a context, and particularly for a little one. And so you will be asked, as well as the mother and father, to answer some questions, committing ourselves in covenant and goodness uh, to be supportive of Isabella. So at this time, I invite Donnie and Jessica to bring forward their daughter, Isabella Carroll. <clears throat> And I'm going to invite all of you children to come and sit right here in the center. And any other children that would like to come down, go ahead, sit in the center. That's the best way for you to see and hear. Come on over, come on over. Any other children that would like to come down and sit. Tell you what, don't sit on the steps because you can't see. Turn around and look up here. That's right. That's right. Okay. <clears throat> So if you'll join us on page 39. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. And friends, I ask you, on behalf of the whole church, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness Reject the evil powers of this world and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power that God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? I do. do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ is open to people of all ages, nations, and races? And will you nurture Isabella in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself, to profess her faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? Now we ask you, 
do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? And will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include Isabella, now before you, in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround Isabella with a community of love and forgiveness that she may grow in her service to others. We will pray for her that she may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. Let us join together in giving thanks. <clears throat> Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time you sent to Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare his works to the nations, his glory among all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water, and she who receives it, to wash away her sin and clothe her in righteousness throughout her life, that dying and being raised with Christ, she may share in Christ's final victory. All praise to you, Eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Miss Isabella. Hey. Hey, baby. Hey, darling, let's get, you, let's get you right. Let's get you right, okay? What name have you given your daughter? Ready? Isabella Carol, we baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit work within you that being born of water and the Spirit, you may grow to be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Wow. Isn't she beautiful? Hey, hang on one second. I'll be right back to y'all. Look at you. Look at you. Kids, did you see what we just did? That's called baptism. The water is a symbol of God's love poured out on this little precious life named Isabella. And the same love is poured out on you and me every day of our lives. And we made a promise, all of us here together, that we would help support Isabella so that she would always know the love of Jesus in us and through us and our lives and that we would help her grow up to be a follower of Jesus. Will you agree to help us with that too? If so, say we will. Amen. 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 Now let me go down here and introduce her to the rest of this congregation. Oh. Look here. It is a joy to present to you Isabella Carol Jones. Look over here. Yeah. Yeah. Look, hey. Look, John Taylor. All right, look over here. Look over here. Look at her. Hey, Isabel. And you know all these people right here. You know all these people right here, don't you? All right, excuse me, kids. Let me walk by. Okay, you'll hold her. Okay. 
It is on the top of page 43. It is our joy now to welcome our new sister in Christ. Through baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as a member of the family of Christ. And Isabella's mother this morning is also joining our church uh, by profession of faith. And so, Jessica, we ask you, having already asked you the questions of faith related to Isabella, I just ask you, will you be loyal to Christ through the United Methodist Church? And will you support this congregation through your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? We welcome Jessica as a new member of this congregation of faith along with Donnie, who's been a member here since he was born. <laughs> Let's welcome them together as a family. And you can be seated. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. All right. Now you're going to have another treat. You can get that one you want. Now you get to offer an act of worship for this congregation. So if you will stand at any other vacation Bible school kids, you have a chance to come forward. Come and stand down here in the front. It keeps going, but you got to come around here and turn and sit one more time. Miss Kitty, come forward, and we invite any other children to come forward now for a special time with Miss Kitty. Turn around and have a seat. Just turn around and listen to Miss Kitty if you would. Then you can go back to your parents. 
Jesus, stay right here. The little children, all the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in His sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. I think that we've already had a children's sermon with the song and with little Isabel. Oh, my goodness. She was so beautiful, don't you think? I'm going to say a Bible verse to you. It's from Psalms 107, verse 1. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His goodness endures forever. There was a man that wrote a lot of the stories in the Bible, and his name was Paul. He talked about us having the fruit of the Spirit, which is not a real fruit. But these are things that Jesus wants us to share with others. These fruits are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Our pastors have talked about one of these every single week. And today we're going to talk about, y'all know from first service, what was it? Goodness. Goodness means caring and sharing God's love and Jesus' love for everybody. I've been away sharing my love with my sister who's been sick. This is the same sister that used to boss me around and we fussed in five and you know what? I loved her all that time. But we can share with people that we fuss with, can't we? We can share love and goodness. Can you think of somebody else we can share love and goodness with? And those out there, you know the family promise. That's sharing Jesus' goodness, don't you think? Or feeding the hospice folks or being good to our friends. Jesus was good to people that he didn't know, and he was good to people that were mean to him. If you think you can be good to your friends and people that, don't, that you don't know, will you raise your hand? <laughs> now let's say a prayer, okay? Heavenly Father, help us to be good in all we do and show our caring and love just like Jesus shows to us. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, children, for sharing. Bye-bye, Bradley. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you so much, Miranda. Good job, good job. Thank these children for sharing their gifts with us. Um, we are also called as a people to be a people of prayer. Uh, we pray because it's an expression of our faith. Um, not to convince God of things, but to share in God's great works of goodness and mercy and to celebrate. So this morning I invite us to enter into this time of celebrating and also petitioning uh, of God. Uh, we serve.
pray all this in his precious name as we call to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The word of God from the 107th Psalm. O give thanks to the Lord, for God is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Those he redeemed from trouble and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some wandered in desert waste, finding no way to an inhabited town. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and God delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way until they reached an inhabited town. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind. For he satisfies the thirsty, and the hungry he fills with good things. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And let us continue to worship Almighty God by the giving of God's tithes and our offerings.
hymn number 121, There's a Wideness in God's Mercy. Our gospel reading for today comes from Luke chapter 6 and verses 43 to 45. Jesus spoke, A good tree doesn't produce bad fruit, nor does a bad tree produce good fruit. Each tree is known by its own fruit. People don't gather figs from thorny plants, nor do they pick grapes from prickly bushes. A good person produces good from the good treasury of the inner self, while an evil person produces evil from the evil treasury of the inner self. The inner self overflows with words that are spoken. It's the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Please be seated. Do you pray with me? Lord God, as we turn on our televisions to watch the nightly news, we see things that are not good, things that are brutal and bad and even evil, people getting hurt, violence, war, people accusing each other of being evil and bad. God, this isn't even news, it's just the same old sad sinfulness that gets repeated over and over. But God, even though the world around us is hurting and all of creation is groaning, we have some good news, O oh God. Even though what we read from Scripture is 2,000 years old, it is always getting reinvented over and over as you are at work and your mercies are new every morning, God. We thank you that this is good news because even though it has been recorded a long time ago, the news goes contrary to the patterns of the world that we see around us. And that is good. So God, we pray that we will be overwhelmed by your goodness this morning, by the good news, which, which is the gospel, O oh God. I pray that you would show your goodness to us in a new and a mighty way that would Encourage us to be filled up by it and to pour it out in our, in our very lives. For it is in the name of Jesus that we pray this in all of our prayers. And let the people of God who love God say together, Amen. Amen. God is good. All the time. And all the time, God is good. I grew up 
saying that and hearing that, and, and it's in my bones. Uh, I could probably be asleep, and somebody could say God is good, and I would say all the time. <laughs> so I would say all the time, God is good. It's just a, a part of me. We use the term good a lot, and in preparation for this sermon, my ear has been attentive to the word good. After the first service, without even realizing it, a lot of people said, man, that was a, that was a good service, sir. There's some good coffee out here. There's some good snacks. How you doing? Good. <laughs> we don't even realize it. It just kind of rolls off the tongue. Good is juxtaposed, put over against evil as we see it. And uh, we see this a lot in, in movies, from children's movies, even in Finding Nemo. We have Nemo, the, the good, and then as soon as he starts to get to the surface of the water... We see all of the evil birds saying, mine, mine. They want to come and eat Nemo and all of his friends. And then there's the Star Wars. One of the most famous movie franchises in history. Even have uh, theme parks and stuff after about 40 years when the first one came out. Well, at the, the end of the third movie that first came out, uh, The Return of the Jedi, we have Luke, the protagonist, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Darth Vader. And uh, then you have the nefarious Emperor Palpatine. And after Luke has gotten the best of Darth Vader, and after Luke is towing the line between good and evil, between Jedi and Sith, come on, shout it out if you know it. <laughs> We have the emperor walking towards him and laughing. <laughs> good, good, good. Your hate has made you powerful. Which is really interesting, right? Because the emperor, being evil incarnate, is saying good, good, good. Whenever he's bad, bad, bad. Good can go from meaning goodness of God's goodness to just being something that is adequate for what we want done. Even in our culture, goodness isn't always that good. Because we have a, a thousand synonyms for good, right? Uh, we have, um, you know, that was spectacular, that was extraordinary, that was over the top, that was stupendous, that was wonderful. All of these, if, if I was going to uh, get asked, which one would you like to have used of, uh, of um, something that you did? I don't know if I would pick good as the first one whenever we have, you know, stupendous or, or wonderful thrown out there. If all of you came over to my house and I made uh, tacos, um, first of all, it would take a really long time to cook, but, I, and I asked you, how, how was the food? And you all said, it was good. I would say, oh, I, it, was, it was only good. It was not better. It was not best. Because even good isn't all that good compared to some of the other words that we use. But I don't think that's because good has really become less good. I think in an effort to want things to be good, we've created a lot of vocabulary. And in some ways, true goodness, God's goodness has, has lost the priority in our heart. It's not that God's goodness has become less powerful, but our overabundance of words talking about goodness has taken our attention off of God's goodness and has lessened our ability to be filled with God's goodness and to be overflowing with God's goodness. This has always been a, a difficulty, even going back to the Garden of Eden. You know, in Genesis 1, it says, God saw all that he created, and it was good. But then, shortly thereafter, Adam and Eve being enticed by the serpent, by this forbidden fruit, to eat it. And as they looked on it, it's not like it was full of worms or anything. The fruit in itself looked to be good. And it didn't seem to be as evil anymore. See, what the, the enemy entices us to do is not to, to, to say, oh, evil is just as evil and you should 
you should do it because it's evil, but instead of going from good and evil, we're enticed to think it's between good and eh, or between good and, you know, it seems, seems all right, seems good enough. And that is the, the temptation that, uh, that, that evil will um, be destigmatized to the point that it appears alluring because the devil gallivants around like an angel of light, as does evil that would try to get us to fork over God's goodness within us. So how do we see goodness? Whenever we think about if something is good, it's usually in comparison to something else. You know, good versus you know, evil, bad, whatever. But I encourage you, friend, don't ever look at goodness in yourself in comparison to other people. It's always a, a temptation. You know, if, if we are in a, um, a competition for something, if we are campaigning for something, the temptation is to say, we are the good ones, so, so don't pull for my opponent because they are not good. Or the, the temptation is if we get into an argument to think uh, self-righteously, I am the good one and, and this person is not good. It's interesting, right before the passage that I read from the Gospel of Luke, Jesus says a very iconic uh, message about comparison. Jesus says, don't look at the spam in your neighbor's eye when you have a hog in your own, or, or something like that. Maybe it was, <laughs> don't look at the speck when you have a log in your own. Uh, you know, we're in East of North Carolina, hog farms and everything is more appropriate. <laughs> but the comparison, we are called not to, to look at comparing ourselves to someone else. Even if we're on, not, you know, saying someone's bad, even if we're comparing ourselves to someone that, is, that we think is really good, that's even bad. Like, oh, if only I could be like that person. They are truly good, and I am, I am truly bad because I'm not like this person. But I would compete to be like that person. Even that is kind of self-centered. Comparing ourselves to other people always is self-centered. So we are compared not to other people who we might think we could become like, but we are compared to God. And we try to be like God, but w whenever we realize just how good God's goodness really is, we realize, wow, I can never get to, to God's level of goodness, which is mercy, which is giving generously, which is, uh, which is love that can never be tamed, that can never be controlled, that can never be killed. And trust me, some people have tried to kill it. It keeps coming back. That kind of goodness is what we see. I hadn't even thought about it until the, the um, baptism this morning, but within baptism, within so much we do in the church is an example of God's goodness. The liturgy in the baptism talks about the good news that we are all about. As we raise up the children in the church, we raise them up, not just looking at the parents and saying, all right, good luck. But part of our baptismal covenant is saying we're all in this together to try to point to God's goodness. That y'all will never have to do this alone. And all the rest of you with children, you will never have to do this alone. Because we are all trying to pour out God's goodness. I love how the, the psalm that Pastor Powell read from points us towards God good, God's goodness. It points us in that direction beginning with gratitude beginning with thank, thankfulness. It says, Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Being filled with God's goodness begins with recognizing God's goodness. And whenever we recognize God's goodness that is enduring forever, we give thanks. I mean, what is it that we say whenever we are literally giving ourselves during the service, we say, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Recognizing God's goodness, having some of it, always begins with thankfulness. Whenever I used to read the Old Testament, uh, as a kid, I had a hard time seeing this thread. So I always thought, man, the Old Testament is like really violent and 
uh, it, it's full of like God being angry, but really, if we read through it, it is full to the brim and overflowing with God's goodness being poured out. The Psalms, even the Psalms of lament, often have a thanksgiving to God for God's goodness. Psalm 107 speaks of God's mercies that while Israel, God's chosen people, were in the wilderness, God gave them a shelter. That when they were hungry and starving, God gave them something to eat. That while they were thirsty and parched, God quenched their thirst. That while they were lonely, God gave them company. You see that the goodness of God is inextricably tied to God's mercy. And whenever we receive it, it is tied to us being grateful. Being grateful for God's mercies, God's goodness, opens us up to have it poured into us. And that's really important. Because as we read in Luke, whatever is poured into us, whatever grows us up, whatever seeds are planted into our lives, that's what begins to manifest. Because you don't get, uh, you can't go up to a nettle with all of its prickliness and pull grapes off of it to eat. You can't go up to a, a thorn bush and get a peach from it. Now, if you've ever gotten oranges, you know, orange trees are kind of malicious, but, but still, you know what I'm saying. And all of us as people, we will, we will bear the kind of fruit of what is poured into us. Now, this kind of steps on my toes a little bit, as it does all of us, because the question comes to us, what are we putting into our lives? Uh, what, where do we spend all of our time? Are we, are we spending it meditating on things that are filled with God's goodness or on things that are devoid of it or things that have a perverted version of goodness? Whenever I go home, do I binge watch television shows that um, are devoid of God's goodness? Or whenever I go home, do maybe I watch one and try to meditate on how God would call me to be good to the people around me? That type of question. What is being poured into us? While it, it is true that um, the, the type of tree we are, the, the, the type of person we are, will, will bear that kind of fruit, I think a good image for this is uh, the image of a cup. If we are like a, a, a vessel, a, a cup that has things poured into it, um, if we have a perverted version of goodness poured into us, it's like sewage water being poured into a cup. Yuck. But how does that get out? By having fresh water poured into it so that the sewage eventually is all cleared out. That's what God's goodness looks like coming into us. Giving fresh water and new life to what is around us. But God's goodness has to pour out from us. Otherwise, it's not God's goodness. For example, I am tempted to keep goodness all to myself because sometimes I'm afraid of the world around me. There's a very real fear that I've had whenever I was a youth pastor and had all of these youth who were at school being uh, tempted by the false goodness of the world, uh, being tempted to be perverted in their idea of what goodness is. And I just wanted to grab all the kids as I wanted to grab my two-year-old son and say, no, let's stay over here away from all of the world, away from non-Christians, away from all these bad examples. And let's just, let's just be good by ourselves. But that would be like filling up a cup with fresh water and just letting it sit there. And then the water becomes stale. There's a lot of churches that have stale water in them. And while there might not be a lot of sewage, they're not pouring out the goodness of God to those around them. Truly, unless we are pouring out God's goodness to the community around us, then it is not really fully God's goodness that is with us. It has to pour out from us. And I know this church has many good ministries from family promise that houses those who don't have homes to... Uh, Lunchbox Love, which we participate in, that feeds 700 hungry children in multiple communities around us. 
two times a week during the summer, to the feeding program during the school year. God's goodness is abounding and is steadfast and is enduring forever. But the question each of us has to ask is, is that goodness coming up in my life and going out? Now, I don't want to be the goodness police, and I don't want any of y'all to be the goodness police, and, and going out and saying, uh, now, now are, what's pouring into your life, and trying to micromanage each other, but instead, let's just be worshipful together. Let's just be bound to one another, so much so that the goodness of God, which pours into us, can pour into each other, and can pour out into this thirsty world around us. Because... God's mercies were mercies to us, and they're not our mercies to hang on to and be stingy with. But God wants to show that goodness to the rest of the world around us. So let's be grateful. Next time you hear the word good, think of something that you can be grateful to God for. And then think of a way that you can be good to the world around you, showering God's good mercies on those who are thirsty. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our final hymn for today is 138, so let us stand and sing together, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is.
I receive these words. Sometimes whenever we are called to be poured out with God's goodness being poured out, there might be a concern for the world's backlash against God's goodness. And sometimes we might even think, my life is at stake if I show God's goodness to the ungood world around me. But I encourage you to see the people who God is calling you to be poured out to because it is not our lives that are at stake, but it is theirs. So be poured out to those around you with the goodness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Share his love. 